العرش بقدسه رمضان شهر عنت لجلاله الأزمان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our amal in this holy month of Ramadan inshallah ta'ala and give us the tawfiq and the chance to take the benefit that is available in this great month inshallah. Today we want to look at one of the philosophies of the month of fasting and we have in a hadith from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam when he was said qala al-Sadiq alayhi salam iddama faradallahu al-siyam liyastawi bihi al-ghani wal-faqir one of the reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the fasting compulsory is to make some sort of equality between those who are rich and those who are poor. Definitely, when we fast, we feel hunger in a way that we're not used to. We feel thirst in a way that we're not used to because normally when we are hungry or when we are thirsty, it is very easy for us to get food. Right, to go and get some food and eat it. But that is not the truth for everybody in the world. There are many people just because they are hungry or thirsty doesn't mean they can just go and get some food. There are many days in which they have to endure hunger. They have to have less uh, in the day than we used to. They may have one meal only, a limited amount to drink. This is, we see this on our televisions all the time. Now, the only way to empathize with them, the only way to feel what they're feeling is in the fast. Because when you feel that hunger, and you feel your stomach rumbling, and you feel your mouth dry, and then you look at the pictures on TV or elsewhere of people who are feeling like that all day long, you can understand their plight. You can realize what they're going through. The only difference between you and them is for you at the time of iftar, it is over. The trial is over. You can eat and drink now. For them, it doesn't end with iftar. There is no such thing. It just continues. And consequently, if this empathy leads to compassion and leads to charity, and this is very important because one of the greatest acts that human beings can do, and in the month of Ramadan especially, is charity. And charity will only come when you have a sense of compassion for people when you see their plight, or in the case of fasting, when you feel it. It is very important that we realize that just because you have money, it doesn't mean, and they do not have money, it doesn't mean somehow Allah has favored you, and that you are closer to Him, and the one who is starving because they are suffering is further from God. No, this is part of God's system, where He gives to some and He controls from some. They're all going through their own test. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have in one of the hadith, uh, Kalimatullah, that as for the people who I have given them wealth, they are my agents. As for the people who I have kept poor, they are my guests. And my system requires my agents to look after my guests. This is what I want. So the guest has got his own duty, with Allah, the agent has got his own duty and both, are mas'ul, both will be asked about this, responsible about this, that you had, why did you not share? And you did not have, why did you not do sabr? All this thing is part of it. So, knowing that everything you do in this month is magnified by God greatly, we are told this is the month of charity and we should give charity. Why should we give charity? First of all, giving out from your money, wealth, it purifies what you have. It gives barakah and, and, and effectivity to what you have. Sometimes having a lot of money doesn't mean barakah. Sometimes people with less money can do bigger things. And having more money doesn't necessarily allow them to do those same things. So it purifies the wealth. Quran in Surah Tawbah says, A'udhu Billahi bin Shaitan rajim خُذُ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَحِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا O Rasulullah, take from their money sadaqa, take from their money charity and, and, and sadaqa, so that it not only um, purifies them, but also cleanses them like this. So sadaqa is something very important. 
In the Akhirah, we have a very beautiful hadith that on the day of judgment, the main problem, the main commodity that everybody will be seeking is shade. People don't have shade. And Imam said, everybody will be in the shade, the, side, the size of his sadaqah. The amount of sadaqat you used to give in life is the amount of the shade you will have. The Quran has a very interesting verse where, you know, when people die, we have many verses that say when people die, they say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, take me back for one day, I will change, let me go back, I will, I will get closer to you. In one of the verses, we have that the people say, I wish I had stayed longer in dunya, not to pray, not to fast, so that I could give sadaqah. Why? Because when they come into Barzakh and Akhirah, they see the huge, huge station of those who used to give sadaqat. Right? So they say, send me back so I can do more sadaqah. Why? Here in dunya, we feel that this money is mine. I deserve it. And the other one he doesn't have, that's his problem. And I should. But we will leave it all behind and we have accountability for that. Right? We have to answer for what we have. And imagining that it is ours is a big mistake. When it comes to giving out in homes or zakat or sadaqat, we find our hands are trembling. Why? Imam al-Sadiq told one of his companions, he was an old man by then, Anwan al-Basri. He said to him, if you want real, because he said to him, show me the secret of ubudiyya, of servanthood, of being the abd of Allah. He said, if you want to know this secret, then remember, abd doesn't own anything. By definition, the slave owns nothing. Everything that he uses, the clothes he has, the, is for the master. If you realize the wealth you possess is not yours, but you are the custodian of it, you are like the accountant. When a rich businessman phones his accountant and says to the accountant, can you transfer 5,000 pounds from this account to that account? Do you think the accountant worries about it? No, it's not his. He's only following the instruction of the owner. Straight away he writes and the money goes. If the accountant thought it was his own money, he would be nervous about it. But he says, it's not my money. I'm being instructed by the owner. When we say, this is not my money, I'm instructed by the owner, who is Allah, to do khairat, to do sadaqat. Then we do it without worry. So in this month, we give sadaqah. And sadaqah, you know, everything that is done for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is written down by the angels, received by the angels, except there are two uh, exceptions to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi bin shaitan rajim Alam ya'lamu anna Allah huwa yaqbalu tawbah Do they not know that when it comes to tawbah, Allah himself takes it? An ibadihi wa ya'khudhu sadaqat And when you give sadaqa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is immediately processing it. It is not by others. God looks at these things personally. Tawbah and sadaqat. When you give, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala personally is involved in that, in that way. So, this is something important. It requires thinking, it requires understanding, and it requires a kind of softness of the heart which comes in fasting. Because how can you look forward to your iftar when you see your family preparing iftar for you? You are hungry. And you know in two hours I will eat all these delicious foods. I will go to friends and we will share good food. And we will eat uh, you know, in the night and all that. And yet you know there are children, they have nothing like this. Their stomach is just as hungry as yours. But they will not get any relief at iftar. They will get what little they can get. And tomorrow the same and the day after the same. So why don't you send something to them? Inshallah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the heart for this inshallah. In terms of Masail, just one thing today that has been highly recommended that sometimes I think we do not do because maybe uh, we do not take it very important, and that is the great emphasis in many, many hadiths on suhoor, on having something in the morning. First of all, the time of suhoor, the time just before uh, the, the fast starts or just before fajr, 
is a very blessed time. In spiritual terms, a very blessed time. Imam Ali alayhi salam would say, if you want to pray in the night, pray at this time. Just before that, the Salat time comes in. It is the best time to pray. And it is the best time to ask for your du'as. And it has special amal. The, the Imams have taught us du'as for suhoor. But we have in hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to his angels that whoever asks me to forgive him at this time of suhoor, I am quick to listen to him and forgive him. And whoever eats some food and some morsel at that time, at sahar time, just before the fast starts, I am especially merciful to him. So it is not about breakfast or pre-breakfast or people say, you know what, I am sleeping through. You have to wake up for Fajr Salat anyway. So suhoor is not a tradition or a custom, rather it is a sunnah and mustahab and highly recommended to do that you have, even if it is just a few dates or few something, so a little bit of water, a fruit, yeah, before you uh, start the fast. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us our a'mal inshallah wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. رمضان عاش بقدسه رمضان شهر عنت لجلاله الأزمان